Welcome back. The classic road show continues to be a lot more crowded than that around the paddock area tomorrow when they run for the 17th time the Breeders' Cup races and one of the guys involved, Jerry Bailey. Looks like a winner right here from last year, isn't it? Isn't it, Randy? Yeah, I believe that's cash run there in the juvenile Phillies. Upset everybody. We just had Wayne Lucas in here talking about that one. That one paid a lot more than Bailey's horses usually pay <laughs> right here. Nine Breeders' Cup race wins. I guess that's good for second to Pat Day, I believe. And the national leader in earnings right now, the whole truckload of money. There's more to be had on Saturday. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being involved. Thanks, Kenny. Randy. Well, there's all sorts of winners we could pick out, but, you know, the headliner, I would think in your heart, our Kong, no, Cigar, but we're going to talk about our Kong as well, but Cigar is the beloved one, is it not? Well, uh, for me it is. Uh, there was a long relationship with myself and Cigar for two years running, and he was very special to me. You realize that Julie Crone rode that horse last, last time on turf, you took over on dirt and went crazy with it. Uh, no feelings of guilt for for taking it away that no I, you know he, they took mike smith off first put julie on and then myself and you know i think that billy mott was trying to find an answer to a, a question that that he couldn't find an answer to and i guess dirt was the answer all right randy where were we in 95 then for getting ready for this classic in 95 we were at belmont park and cigar had for all intents and purposes already wrapped up the horse of the year title i guess the question was uh how did he rank with some of the all-time greats could he win the breeders cup class can sort of put an exclamation point on that year but there was a X factor in there if I recall it was an off track that's correct uh, it had rained the night before and he had really never performed well on a wet track and it was a big question mark uh, along with that he was in the 10 post breaking on the turn which was not very advantageous and he was stalled in the paddock they thought his shoes weren't proper so they kept him back in the, the paddock they thought he had turned down shoe or turned down shoes when in fact they were just bent a little you know, it was a whole litany of things that made question marks. Could he do it? Uh, let's find out. Well, we already know the answer, but let's let's presume we don't know the answer. Okay. See this race, 1995. Cigar, you feeling good right now on the break? Well, he was the kind of horse that always wanted to go to the lead. All right, run it. Opening half mile, one's in 48 and one fifth seconds. Soul of the matter now has to pick it up, but he threads his way through in between horses. Then far the back, it's French Deputy, who's only three and a half lengths from the lead, then Peaks and Valets, followed by Hauling. A break of three to Jed Forrest, followed by Tinner's Way. Concern is still last. Three furlongs to go. Cigar! Cigar makes his move, and he sweeps to the lead with a dramatic rush with three furlongs to go. And Jerry Bailey turns him loose, and he guides him down to the rail as the field turns for home. Unaccounted for it down inside, a quarter of a mile between Cigar and a perfect season coming down to the last furlong with a two and a half length lead. And Jerry Bailey calls on Cigar for everything he has. The carrier is awakening second on the inside on the cotton board. On the outside, so of the matter. And here he is, the incomparable, invincible, unbeatable Cigar. Remember those words. That was win number 12 in a row of what would become 16 to tie citation and finally getting knocked off out of Del Mar. There's Mr. Paulson, Mr. Mott, trainer and the owner, and the late Alan Paulson. You started off by saying there at the break that his cigar was like to go up toward the lead. You had a tough time persuading him otherwise in that race, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, left to his own devices, he would have been on the lead in every race he ran. Uh, the question, could he go a mile and a quarter on the lead? And I never thought that was his best style. So I was in the spot to try and keep him from getting the lead as long as I could. As long as my muscles would hold out, I would keep him off the lead. At what point during the race did you realize that the off track was going to be absolutely no factor to him? Actually, the third jump out of the gate, second, third jump, he was so aggressive and getting a hold of it that I, I was never worried. How fun was that to to be involved in something that really, really took the nation in a certain way? Because horse racing, you know, you, you do the pecking order of sports. It's it's not up there with the three majors and, and is, is still trying to catch ground with some of the others. So here you had the attention of people who didn't normally follow it. I saw you raise number one. It looked like, you know, a great deal of pride involved there. It, it was. And of all the things that I've accomplished in this sport, I think that it's my favorite. I m might be best known for my association with cigar because it's very rare as you've seen with Fusa Fusaichi Pegasus that a horse lasts two years especially on a high level. What was the, the old saying about from the sublime to the ridiculous whatever <laughs> take us uh, our Kong. He, he told a good Jerry Bailey story but it's, it's better coming you from should, you. Yeah. Well in the, the paddock. From the paddock. You know I walked in the paddock I didn't know what Andre Fab the trainer looked like. Uh, it was a mob, mob scene I couldn't find him so I just went to the horse. 
both the lads spoke French. I didn't speak any French. Couldn't find the trainer. So they put me on the horse and they started telling me how to ride him. Well, I just kept nodding. I know how these, these fellows that come over to this country don't speak any English feel now. <laughs> and so I just kept nodding, not knowing anything of what they were saying. And I headed out to the track, not having an idea on how they wanted this horse ridden. And, and then you got a chance to meet Andre Fobb there real quickly, right? Well, on my way out, he did, he did wave, and I, I acknowledged that it was him. And he said, ride him European style. <laughs> <laughs> that helped. Do we have the race again so you can see uh, how ridiculous this was? 100, what was it, 133 to 1. You, and you, had a sneak at the, you had a sneak peek at the tote board going out there, I right? Did in the post parade I watched it and I just didn't want to be last <laughs> so you, you came to the rail try to well you know go back to the old tactic of at least you know beat a couple horses by saving some ground well, I, I had nothing to lose so I dropped him back to last went to the rail and, and was hoping for the best now it, it, when you're riding a 99 to one shot you got to be thinking at, at some point well, maybe I can be four if he's running okay maybe three but what, what was your mindset during the at race? midway through the race I thought I had a chance to be on the board and as we turned for home I really thought I had a chance to win it but a lot of times you'll be sitting on a horse and you think you have a bunch left, and when you ask the question, the answer is no. I was just hoping the answer would be yes when I asked it. I, I, you're, you're starting to now uh, disbelieve what is taking place, right? Like, how could I be on this thing? I'm on the lead and they're not going to get me. I don't know who was more shocked, myself or Gary Stevens, when I ran by him. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it wins with even more authority. You, you're going to, like, increase. It wasn't just getting by him. It was continuing to extend the lead. And no, he won with, with some authority. And if you look back on his form, he had beaten a horse called a Razi earlier in the year, which gave him some credentials. Obviously, because of what he paid, not as many people bet on Arkong as have claimed to have bet on Arkong, correct? Everywhere I go, I hear the story of how these people bet on Arkong, and it must have been 500 people. If, if they'd all bet on him, he'd have never paid like $269. No, but when you when you came back, I mean, you must have felt that, that heartfelt appreciation from those that day who you knew really did bet, right? I mean, the well, look what's in their fun eyes. is from then, which was 1993, and now I, I'm always getting stories of how you made my vacation or you <laughs> sent my child to school. There it is, 269 and change. So it goes to show, we, you know, we've, we've told some other stories too. De Haas taking the time off, um, other horses who were, the, the disbelief even after winning, you get it from both ends. Is, is there any one thrill that's better when you're on the long shot or, or on the favorite that comes through? Because then so much more is being counted on you. Well, I think it's more fun on a long shot because with the favorite, you have all the pressure going in, and you know, and you can't enjoy it going in the race. On a long shot, you're pretty much carefree. All right. Congratulations on all the wins. Good luck on all the races tomorrow and in the future. Thanks for being part of this on ESPN Classic. Thanks, Hank. Thanks, Randy. All right. Stay around. We got more joggers. They're lining up.